a new species of ancient human, thought to have been under four feet tall and adapted to climbing trees, has been discovered in the Philippines, providing a twist in the story of human evolution. The specimen, called Homo luzonensis, was excavated from a cave on Luzon Island in the northern Philippines, and has been dated to between 50,000 and 67,000 years ago, just as modern humans were blitzkrieging across Europe and Asia. In Philippine folklore, the Amamongo is a creature described as a human-like ape with long fingernails. The name is probably derived from the native word which translates to ape or monkey. Natives say the Amamongo is a hairy, violent and wild creature that lives in caves near the foot of a large volcano. We tend to have anthropomorphized views of tiny ancient humans, seeing them as something like children, but the truth could be that they may have been necessarily very fierce, violent and animalistic in order to survive. You can imagine that eradicating such a creature would have been the first thing that any modern humans would have done when they arrived. It was once thought that no humans left Africa until about 1.5 million years ago, when Homo erectus set off on a dispersal that ultimately allowed it to occupy territory spanning Africa and Spain, China, and Indonesia. Then, according to the traditional narrative, after a few hundred thousand years of not much happening, our own ancestors dispersed from Africa about 100,000 years ago. Homo luzonensis is one of those species and we will increasingly see that a few thousand years back in time, Homo sapiens was definitely not alone on Earth. Decades ago, the story of Asia seemed far more straightforward, if incomplete. Paleoanthropologists knew that archaic hominins, such as Homo erectus ventured over land bridges into parts of what is now Indonesia nearly a million years ago. But farther east, it was thought that these hominins ran into ocean currents considered impassable without boats. Luzon seemed especially difficult for ancient hominins to reach, as it had never been connected to the mainland by land bridges, so archaeologists thought that digging into deeper, older layers of soil wouldn't yield much. Most Southeast Asian archaeologists would only excavate cave sites up to two meters, and they would stop. The unusual species of human apparently lived on the island of Luzon in the Philippines as recently as 50,000 years ago. Based on teeth and bones found there, scientists suspect that these early humans probably stood less than four feet tall and had several ape-like features. The pronounced curve of one toe bone, the proximal phalanx, from a specimen of Homo luzonensis, an early human found in a Philippine cave, looks more like it came from tree-climbing australopithics than from a modern human. The excavation did not yield a complete skeleton. Seven teeth, two hand bones, three foot bones and one thigh bone were found, thought to belong to two adults and one child. Nevertheless, the fossils provide intriguing clues to the appearance and lifestyle of Homo luzonensis. It is not known whether the new species, along with the hobbit, represent earlier dispersals from Africa than Homo erectus, or whether they are descendants who later shrank and evolved new anatomical traits. Another mystery is how they arrived at Luzon, a large island that has never been connected to the mainland by a land bridge. One possibility is that the early humans set out to sea intentionally on some form of raft. Another is that they were washed there in relatively large numbers due to a natural event such as a tsunami. Arrival by accident is favored by many scholars, but this is mainly because of arguments such as Homo erectus were not clever enough to cross the sea on purpose. But the fact is that we have now more and more evidence that they successfully settled on several islands in the remote past in Southeast Asia. So it was probably not so accidental. The discovery is likely to reignite debates over when ancient human relatives first left Africa. And the age of the remains suggests that several different human species once coexisted across Southeast Asia. Further excavations of Kalao Cave uncovered a thigh bone, seven teeth, two foot bones and two hand bones, with features unlike those of other human relatives. The remains come from at least two adults and one child. The molars are extremely small compared with those of other ancient human relatives. Elevated cusps on the molars, like those in Homo sapiens, are not as pronounced as they were in earlier hominins. The shape of the internal molar enamel looks similar to that of both Homo sapiens and Homo erectus specimens found in Asia. The premolars discovered at Kalao Cave are small but still in the range of those of Homo sapiens and Homo floresiensis. 
but the authors report that the overall size of the teeth, as well as the ratio between molar and premolar size, is distinct from those of other members of the genus Homo. The shape of the Homo luzonensis foot bones is also distinct. They most resemble those of Australopithecus, primitive hominins, including the famous fossil Lucy, thought not to have ever left Africa. Curves in the toe bones and a finger bone of Homo luzonensis suggest that the species might have been adept at climbing trees. You get different evolutionary pathways on islands, so you can imagine Homo erectus arrives on islands like Luzon or Flores, and no longer needs to engage in endurance running and needs to adapt to spend the night in trees. But, given the species' similarities to Australopithecus, the cave dwellers may have descended from a line that migrated out of Africa before Homo erectus. Genetic material from the remains could help scientists to identify the species' relationship to other hominins, but efforts to extract DNA from Homo luzonensis have failed so far. Indeed, island Southeast Asia appears to be full of paleontological surprises that complicate simple scenarios of human evolution. Furthermore, Stone tools found in the Philippines predate the arrival of modern humans to the islands by roughly 600,000 years, but researchers aren't sure what ancient humans made them. The eye-popping artifacts were abandoned on a river floodplain on the island of Luzon beside the butchered carcass of a rhinoceros. The ancient toolmakers were clearly angling for a meal. Two of the rhino's limb bones are smashed in, as if someone was trying to harvest and eat the marrow inside. Cut marks left behind by stone blades crisscross the rhino's ribs and ankle, a clear sign that someone used tools to strip the carcass of meat. But the age of the remains makes them especially remarkable. The carved bones are most likely between 631,000 and 777,000 years old, with researchers' best estimate coming in around 709,000 years old. The research pushes back occupation of the Philippines to before the known origin of our species, Homo sapiens. It was surprising to find such an ancient peopling of the Philippines. While the researchers don't know which archaic cousin of ours butchered the rhino, the find will likely cause a stir among people studying the human story in the South Pacific, especially those wondering how early hominins got to the Philippines in the first place. Several of the habitable islands across the South Pacific have long been hemmed off by swaths of open ocean, so it was thought that humans' ancient cousins couldn't have made it to them without knowing how to sail. The list of possible toolmakers includes the Denisovans, a ghost lineage of hominins known from DNA and a handful of Siberian fossils. The leading candidate, though, is the early hominin Homo erectus, since it definitely made its way into Southeast Asia. The Indonesian island of Java has Homo erectus fossils that are more than 700,000 years old, and also date to as recent as 100,000 years ago. But anthropologist John Hawkes believes those late Java Homo erectus could actually have been Denisovan. Whoever they were, the toolmakers' ancestors may have taken one of two migration routes into the Philippines, a west-to-east route from Borneo or Palawan, or a north-to-south route from China and Taiwan. But it's an open question how these hominins crossed the open ocean. Water dispersal by Homo erectus is accidental, there's no manifest destiny. There's no plot, says Russell Syashan, a paleoanthropologist at the University of Iowa, who once mistook the jawbone fossil of Gigantopithecus as that of an unknown ancient human. Manifest destiny is the idea that Europeans were divinely ordained to settle the entire continent of North America. There's also outstanding questions about what happened, and if descendants of these early hominins made contact with the first modern humans to reach Luzon. Because Luzon has always been an island in the last two million years, the ancestors of Homo luzonensis would have had to have made a substantial sea crossing. Did our species come face to face with these creatures, and what was the nature of that contact? If you look at the fossils and recent faunas you see that there is an impoverishment as you go from north to south. On Luzon you find fossils of stegodans, elephants, giant rats, rhino, deer, large reptiles and a type of water buffalo. On Sulawesi, the fossil fauna is already impoverished, there's no evidence of rhinos or deer ever entering there. Then on Flores Island, you only had stegodans, komodo dragons, humans and giant rats, that's all. If animals did reach these islands by chance, 
By entering the sea and following the current south, then you would expect the further south you go the fewer species you would find. And that's what we see, say archaeologists. On Flores Island, scientists are pretty certain primitive humans arrived about one million years ago based on stone tool evidence, but archaeologists don't know when hominins first arrived on Luzon Island in the Philippines. Now archaeologists can go looking in older layers and see if they can find more artifacts, or even better, fossil evidence. About 90% of the bone fragments from the cave belong to the Philippine deer, which suggests that deer carcasses were periodically brought into the cave. But with the exception of Palawan Island, where there were tigers, there is no evidence of large carnivores ever inhabiting the Philippines during the Pleistocene, which attributes these to human activity. There are cut marks on a deer tibia, and a lack of tools in the cave could either have resulted from the use of organic material for tools rather than stone, or the processing of meat away from the cave. 6 lithic cores, 49 lithic flakes, and 2 hammerstones were also found at the cave, which are similar to the chert industry from the lower Paleolithic site in central Luzon. Also present were the remains of the elephant stegodant, the Philippine deer, freshwater turtles, and monitor lizards. With two puzzling species in Southeast Asia, scientists are also wondering what it tells us about the migration of human ancestors out of Africa. The standard view holds that the first species of human to leave Africa was a large-bodied, fairly big-brained group called Homo erectus, almost two million years ago. Homo erectus spread throughout Asia and Europe. One possible explanation for the existence of Homo luzonensis is that a population of Homo erectus got to the Philippines, long ago maybe hundreds of thousands of years ago, and stayed put. As they evolved, some of their physical traits became more like those of modern humans, some of the teeth, for example. But other traits, like toes, did not evolve or may even have regressed to a more primitive form. Indeed evolution plays some unusual tricks, especially on organisms that live in isolation. With two strange species of early humans turning up in the past two decades, Paleontologists are wondering what the findings mean for the history of humanity. The evolution of our genus is getting weirder and weirder. In fact, species are fluid entities, which makes them highly malleable, subject to change. Therefore, these discoveries play havoc with any easy classification of our ancestors, and with the notion that there was a fairly orderly progression from primitive to more modern traits. What is becoming clearer is that early humans came in a lot more shapes and sizes than scientists once thought.